Welcome back. I'm Cindy Cloward and today we are working on block number six of our building block series. It's called Duck and Ducklings. Now it's a traditional churn dash block, but the special part is there are these ducklings in the four corners. Use your imagination. There's the duck, those are the ducklings. I love a good churn dash block and this just makes this block a little more special. So the first thing we're going to do is download the pattern on our Riley Blake Designs website. Again, it's called Duck and Ducklings. Cut out your pieces per instructions. I've got all my pieces cut out and labeled. So let's get started on assembling this block. The first thing we're going to do is take our E and A pieces and put those to the side. Now there's two ways you can do this and this is my favorite way is to cut out long strips but if you don't have long strips you can cut out individual pieces and assemble those. But it's always better, quicker and easier to strip piece. So let's take this to our pressing station and I give it a good press before I sew. So we're going to bring this over here right sides together. Make sure I've got my right size to that. That looks good. Now you can pin these strips together and if you're new to quilting that's a great thing to do. But I also like to avoid that step and plus press my pieces and it creates a temporary adhesive like we've talked about before and then you take it to machine using a fourth inch seam allowance. We're just gonna sew this strip. Okay, you've got your strip sewn. Now we're gonna open this up. Well, I'm gonna set my stitches real quickly, open it up, just kind of give it a finger press down, pressing to the dark side. And I just follow it up with my clapper. Got your press strip like this. Now we're going to cut our four and a half inch squares. So I really like the square up ruler tool. We can start at this end, just kind of square it up. So top and bottom should be four and a half inches. Just going to flip this over like this. And you're going to need your, um, your little units are going to be four and a half inch squared. So line your center line up right here. And we're going to do this all at once. It's going to be squared up all at once. Okay, that is extra. We'll throw that away. And those four units are ready to be sewn later. The next thing it tells you to do in the pattern is to grab your C pieces and your, oh, I'm gonna have to get on my glasses for this. Okay, my C and G. So grab these and C. There's two of each. And on the wrong side of your fabrics, you're going to mark corner to corner. I just have a mechanical pencil.
Now this is your sewing guide, not your sewing line. You're going to put these two squares right sides together like this, oops, right sides together. I'm going to give them a quick press, press because I don't like to pin. So a quick press will hold them into place. And then this is my guide. I'm going to sew a fourth inch on each side of these, making four half square triangles. So let me give them a quick press. Now, if you have this Seam So Easy guide, it's very handy. You, don't, you can even skip the marking of the line and you can just line up this top corner and this bottom corner with your fourth inch seam guide and just sew. So that's a handy tool to have added to your sewing machine. Sew down the other side. Clip your threads. Now this marked line down the center is your cutting guide. Just going to cut that down. Okay, let's go press these open. Let's kind of set those seams real fast. Pressing to the dark side. Just let them cool under a clapper. Why those are cooling, I'm going to grab my rotating mat and our little two and a half inch scrap ruler. I'll grab our blocks. They're all nicely pressed. Now let's square them up to two and a half inches or trim them up. Whatever terminology you like to use. Okay, so the key to this is line the center diagonal line on the center diagonal portion of our little half square triangle. And you can kind of pull it down to one corner like that. So you're just cutting off the two sides and the dog ear, that works. And then just use your rotating mat to work around the edges. Rotating mat, I love this tool. Again, you can center and cut it all four sides. I just like to pull it down to uh, one of the sides and trim, like two and a half sides. Okay, those are all done. We'll put this back down. And the next thing we'll put these up here. The next thing we need to do is grab our B squares. And we are going to cut these corner to corner on the diagonal and make some triangles. So we're going to make eight triangles from your B squares. There we go. So we got all our triangles. And now we're going to make this little unit. So to make this duckling, 
can look at the pattern, but it's probably easier to show you on here. These are the two triangles that we just created out of the B square. And then we've already made this little um, half square triangle unit. So we're gonna make this section right here that we're gonna assemble together. So let me pull up this design board, get our half square triangles and then our triangle pieces. This is what it's gonna look like. The whites on the corner and then we're going to have these two pieces on the side. Make sure I got. And that's what it's going to look like. So the first thing we're going to do, so we'll get all of our pieces like this. I'm flipping this right sides together and putting a pin in it. We're going to put our first triangle piece on. We're going to sew from this corner to this corner on each of these pieces. Okay, um, let me just clip my threads in between and take it to your pressing station. I'm gonna open this up and press to the dark side. Just set those. Seems really fast. Actually, it kind of wants to not press to the dark side, so I'm not going to make it. Okay, let's bring these little units back over. And to finish this triangle portion, that needs to line up the top like this. You're gonna have some overhang at the bottom. You can just flip it over like that. And then just throw a pin in it right here. And you can choose to flip it over and sew it on that side or just start at this little cleavage right here and sew down that way. Okay, I'm going to clip all my connecting threads, open up the unit, that looks good. Okay, let's go give them a good press. Have my steam on today so you can give them a good steam. Just let them cool off underneath the clapper. All right, before we jump to our next step, I, this is my super long trim up ruler. What you don't want to do, you want to have that fourth inch outside of that blue marked line. Just line them up. I'm gonna kind of trim off those dog ears. Just gonna line that up. Okay, those are ready to go. Now I'm just cutting my um, F squares now diagonally. You may have done that already. Just kind of doing one step at a time and you're gonna cut these green squares on the diagonal. Okay, so you've got four of these and you have four 
of these little deck clean units. And now we are going to put these right sides together. And that will make our deck and deck leans. And I tend to pin these because this is the bias and it does stretch. So I tend to pin these when I sew so they're ready to go. And then I always sew on this side. So when I am sewing down here, I make sure I don't sew into this point. I make sure I just am sewing a hair or two on the inside. And if you've got an accurate fourth inch seam allowance, you should be able to do that whether you have it flipped to this side or not. But an extra measure um, of protection that you're not sewing into this tip is that you flip it over and watch. So I'm going to flip that over, right sides together. Let's just clip our threads and then take it over to our pressing station. I'll just get them a quick pressed. Set those steams a little bit. And open it up like this. See our point is right there at the tip. It's just what we want to see. Okay, that's cool underneath that. perfect point right there. So let's bring them over here. And we're going to just cut off these dog ears and just make sure they're squared up accurately. Again, you're just going to line that center up. And with these lines, you can just see these lines right here. Can just line that half square triangle up. Make sure everything is the correct size. If it pulls inside slightly, that's okay. Anything outside, you can trim off. It's mainly threads. Again, if it's shifting, hold down. There's just a sliver of fabric on the outside here. Okay, that's ready to go. Put that over there. Yeah, line that up. Okay. Those are ready to go. We're ready to assemble our block. And each of these units go on the outside. Our little duck and ducklings. We got the D square in the center. And we just need to adjust these. And you can see our Churn dash forming. Flip that over the right way. Give it a little more space. There we go. Now let's assemble our block. It's just kind of a big 
nine pat and we're gonna flip those over oh I had that on the wrong side I just toss a pin where I'm gonna start my stitches Now I don't press in between and I don't cut my threads so they're, everything's attached. Just lay that out, flip these over, keeps you organized this way. Okay, let's sew down this other side. Okay, let's bring this back and I don't cut my threads in between all my sections so I can lay it out and it's all connected. Now I just need to make two more seams. Now on the pressing portion, I still kind of wait to press, but you can, could press right now if you'd like. I look and see where my seams naturally want to lie. And since I have more bulk on these units, I'm gonna have them go, the seams go this direction, but on this way, they'll go out so I can nest my seams. I'm going to finger press again. You can give them a good press right now. But I think finger pressing is just fine at this stage. Now I'm going to nest these units together or just nest my seams. I'll throw a pin in it right there. So this, my white, is going to the dark side, just like that. Once I've got my seams pinned in place, I do throw a pin on the outside. Just like that, open it back up. I'm gonna pin this side at this time as well. So you can see that is going to the dark side, pressing it that direction, nesting my seams. Look at, that's all lined up, looks good. Let's give it one last good press. And I guess a little water on that. Set these seams. I use both a mister and a steamer sometimes. I'm very careful 
um, with water on certain projects. But that just gives a good press like that. Let's open it up. And do a finger press. All right. And our block is almost finished. So the last thing we need to do is kind of square it up with their 12 and a half inch ruler. Get out all my scraps. And let's line this up. I almost need a bigger mat, but this will work. Okay, I'm going to line this all up. It's pulling slightly inside. It's okay. I can give it a tug when I assemble the block together so I don't see anything I need to trim at this point. And the duck and duckling quilt block is finished. Join us next time for block number seven, Birds in the Air.